This is the seventh video in the series for Word 2013 and in this video I wanted to talk about table of contents when you're writing a book or a research paper you can have a like a first page which shows the table of contents and we'll also look at citations and end notes a little bit so I'm going to start with a blank document and because I want to get some content so I'm going to do what I did previously equal R A N D D for David, bracket, and I'm going to put, say I want 30 paragraphs, comma, and each paragraph should have 10 lines. And I'll hit enter. So now I'll end up having a whole bunch of pages. So let's see how many pages do I have. Seven pages. If you look on the left hand side on the bottom, it's showing me that I have seven pages. Okay, so let me just come to the top of the page. So now what I want to do is I want to make it like as if I'm writing either a book or I'm writing like a research paper. So I'll just for example I'll put chapter 1 title. So this is like my chapter 1. And for you to make table of contents work, what we have to use is we have to take the headings into account the styles headings because these are the styles which will tell the table of contents to take these titles and use it in the table of contents so that's the way word will understand it so I'll highlight this title and because this is like my main title I'll make it heading one and I'll just scroll down a little and uh, say up here I'm gonna hit enter and I wanted to add like a section 1.a now because this is like a subsection within the chapter I'm going to highlight it and make it heading 2. So so you get the idea like when there is a main chapter chapter 2 will be heading 1 chapter 2.a will be heading 2. Now if I if I had section 1.a.1 that would be heading 3. Okay so I'll do one example of that so I'll just scroll down a little and maybe on page 2 somewhere I'll enter here and I'll type section 1.a.1 and I'll make this heading 3 and you'll see this when I make my table of contents you will see that in action now I'll scroll down now say for example here I wanted to this this line starting was my chapter 2 and I forgot to do this so in the previous video I talked about breaks so I'll introduce that concept here too so I can go to page layout under breaks I'll choose in this case next page break so that it will take everything that starts after this line and it will put it on a new page and there it is now up here I'll put the chapter 2 and I'll highlight this I'll go to home and I'll make this heading 1 and I'll just do a few more like that up here I'll just enter and then I'll type section 2.a and I'll make this heading 2. Now in the previous video I also talked about how you can control sections within the same chapter. So in this case say I wanted to make this paragraph on its own so what I do is I can click here or here and then I go to page layout and I put a break but I put a continuous break because I don't want the section to start on the new page I want it to start on that same page in the same place and you see it shows me in this diagram how the red line is starting in the same place in the next page it's starting on a new page so I'll click that and I'll click at the end of this paragraph and I'll go to breaks and I'll put a continuous break now you don't see the break because you need to go to home and then press the show and hide button so that my breaks are visible because I can click in front of them and then I can hit delete to remove it. Now why is this useful? Because I can go to say for example page layout and I can go to margins, custom margins. Now I can make this section you see on the bottom is showing me that this is going to apply to this section because I clicked in it and I can make the margins on the left say 0 0.4 and on the right 0 0.4 so now they have a different margin than the rest of the page so this is the way section breaks come into play so I'll just go back down here and say 
from this point onwards I wanted to start chapter 3 so I can go back to break and put the next page so everything goes to the new page I'll type chapter 3 I'll highlight it I'll go to home and I'll make it heading 1 and I'll do maybe just I'll appear I'll put section 3.a highlight it make it heading 2 and I'll do one more somewhere Okay, last page I can put section 3 point a point 1 and this will be heading 2 Oh, I think this will be heading 3 sorry because I used the previous one this should have been heading 2 okay so I've got all my headings in place now I'm gonna click in front here and let's see I'll insert a blank page because the table of contents goes usually on the first page of your chapters so I'll click it now I come up because I've got a blank page above it and I can just delete it so that there is nothing there and I can go to home and I can just make it no spacing so there is no confusion there any formatting carrying over from the previous thing and I'll go to references and in the references I'll go to table of contents and I can choose any of these designs so say I choose this one and let's see what happened here so you see there it is chapter 1 section 1.a and it is indented according to the heading style now you whenever you make changes you just click here and you just update the entire table so let's see we'll just practice one I'll scroll down to maybe uh, the chapter 3 and I'll put something in here section 3.b and I'll go to home highlight this and I'll make it heading style 2 so let's see if I go back to my main page I'll click here update I'll choose the entire table and there it is 3.b shows up with the page number and the page numbers will also get updated if you go back and start making changes I'm just going to turn off the show and hide so table of contents are really useful in uh, automatically getting it in so if you're writing a book or a research paper this is very handy the next thing I want to talk about and which is also part of references is about adding citations so when you're writing a book or a research paper and you get information from the internet or from a book you need to cite it and then you can add a bibliography at the end and there are different styles that I use for citation APA is one style which is most common but you'll find that there are different styles so you can check what kind of a style do they want and then the bibliography will be added accordingly so let's practice some of this so I'll just come down to here and say up here I want to say that I got some information here from a book so I can go to insert citation add new source and now this is the book if it was like a book section then I can choose book section and then I can click and I can put the name of the author the title of the book and you'll find that uh, sometimes you get confused about what is this field and what is this field so when you click in here it will tell you what information should go in there and you'll find that they are repeating it but you'll find that they give you examples of what needs to be going in there so you can type and just follow that example so I'm just filling up the information from the book itself and I click OK and it will put something there which is the APA style where it puts the last name of the author and then the year it was published so somebody was looking at it they'll go to the bibliography look in the alphabetical order and find the word do so we'll do that in a few minutes 
and I'll just scroll down and say up here I want to add a internet so I got some information from the internet so I'm going to add a citation here add a new source and I'll say that I got this information from a website so now again it wants me to type the name of the author name of the web page if that page had a name you know sometimes certain web pages have a name name of the website the year that you came across it so you can put so say I came across it 2013 so I'm typing August because up here on the bottom in the example they say August so I cannot put 08 and then the URL so whatever the URL you just copy and paste it so you need to put the whole exact URL so that somebody can click on it and they can read more about it and I click OK so wherever you need it as you're writing you'll keep doing it now I'll go to the end of the page my last page I'll click here and I'll insert a blank page so because it's at the end it's going to add a page after this and I'll click here and I'll insert the bibliography so I go to references bibliography and then you can choose any one of those click it and scroll up a little and there it is and it puts the whole information here so whenever you want you can come back and update it so again if I go in and add something here I insert a citation add a new source for a book and I'll just follow this So I've added it, now all I have to do is go to the last page, click in here, choose update, and it is updated. So that's it in terms of adding bibliography. So it's so a very handy feature so that you don't have to keep on making changes to it. And also trying to remember what comes first and what information needs to go where. It will automatically do this for you. So along with the um, table of contents and bibliography, you can also add footnotes. Footnotes are, you know, when you're reading a book, it will say one, and then you look on the bottom of the page, and it explains to you in more detail. And then they have also have, you can also track endnotes. Endnotes are usually that go at the end kind of a thing, where you can read more about it. So let's see. So if I wanted to put a footnote here, this is page four that I'm on and I can insert a footnote here and you see right away it takes me down and if I just scroll up you should see where I had clicked it put the number one there and you see there it is footnote so if I click here and I try to add a footnote here it will put number two there and now I have to just leave a note for the second footnote. So every page it will start with one because it's just going to be looking at it on the bottom. Now the same way for EndNote. So if I click EndNote, you'll find that it automatically takes me all the way to the bottom of the document. And now here, this is my EndNote. Now if I go back to page four, it should say next to that section something so this is page 5 and there it is so you see it puts like that I thing and when I point to it it says this is my end note so that end note shows up here what I typed at the end so footnotes and end note 
And within references, you also see the options to add indexes. So you can mark a entry. That is, uh, you know, a lot of time when you read a book, at the end of the book, it has an index. So you can look at it and see on what page, what topic, or what thing got mentioned. So you can actually mark them. So wherever I wanted, I could click, and I can click on the word mark entry, and then I can type the word, um, in this case, device, which is the main entry. And if it was like some... Uh, this topic was part of a major entry then I could type the major topic and then the sub entry will be device and I just click mark and it puts a weird thing there so you don't have to worry about that it will go away once you turn off the show and hide it turns it off now when you go to the last page and you add a um, index these things will show up so just to show you quickly say I'll just click here uh, up here maybe and I'll add a index mark entry and from references mark close this let's see I'll see some more maybe okay I'll do a gallery here And I'll click mark and I'll close this. Now I'll just go to the last page. Click here and I'll insert a blank page up here. I'll have to click here, not the end note. And here I'll try to go to references, insert index, and you can choose whether you want one column or two columns. And then you click OK. And there it is. So it tells me that I mentioned galleries on page number five, device on page number four, online video on page number four. So I'll just go back to home and turn off the show and hide. So then here's my index. So that's it for this video. We talked about table of contents, which you can apply by using the heading ones and heading two styles and heading three styles. And you can also insert footnotes and endnotes. You can insert the indexes also and also insert citations. And you can add the bibliography at the end. And the good thing is when you make mistakes, you just go back to manage sources and then just update. So say I, I type the, the spelling mistake in Do, I can just edit it and say this instead of Do was, it was done I just make the changes here and the updates will have happened everywhere so I don't have to worry about making any changes to everything even in the table of contents you'll find that there's some option where you can do custom table of contents and then you can choose how many levels you want to go to heading 1 heading 2 heading 3 you can also say make it also heading 4 so you can apply that if you needed it thank you for watching and we'll do some more things in the next video.